Welcome back to Barber and Haskell's Kitchen at Home Edition. My name is Amanda and today we are going to be making donuts for National Donut Day as voted on by our Facebook followers. Thank you so much to everybody who took the time to vote. Before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the tools you might need to make this recipe. Some of them are optional and some of them you might want to have. So. I love to have a kitchen scale all the time when I'm doing baking. It's much more accurate to weigh flour and ingredients like that. Um, another thing that isn't a must, but something that I have is just a cookie cutter for the donuts. Um, again, if you have like a large cookie cutter and then a small one, you don't need this, but it will, I'm assuming, make my job easier. Full disclosure, I've never made donuts before. I've never even deep fried anything before. So this could turn out really good or into a wonderful, weird experiment. So, <laughs> um, Also, you're gonna want a thermometer because you're gonna wanna make sure your oil gets up to a certain temperature. And also when you're doing the yeast, you wanna make sure that it gets up to a, a certain temperature but not too hot. So um, a thermometer is a must have for this one. Another must have is a Dutch oven or very you know, heavy bottomed pot, then we're gonna use this to actually deep fry our donuts in. And this is not a must have, but I love my KitchenAid mixer. It saves me a lot of arm, um, a lot of elbow grease and a lot, of, a lot of arm when you're working with dough. So I highly recommend using um, your mixer if you have one, but again, it's not needed. So now let's talk about ingredients. All right, so what I really liked about this recipe, and I'm just gonna talk to you about the ingredients that we need to make the dough. I didn't have to go to the store to buy the ingredients to make this, which is one of the reasons that I really liked this recipe in particular. So we have a cup of whole milk. We have a tablespoon of active dry yeast. I'm using instant yeast. We have a quarter cup of granulated sugar, two large eggs, six, tablespoons of butter that has been melted but then let cool, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, four cups of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and that's all we need. Um, and as I said, I did not need to go to the store to buy any of these ingredients, which was super nice. So let's see how this is done. All right, so on to step one, we need to activate our yeast. So I've actually, I'm heating the milk up to 110 degrees and I've got it up to that point. I have my thermometer in the bowl. Because this is metal, I do tend to just heat my milk right on um, the stove. So now that it's up to 110 degrees, I'm just gonna throw my yeast in. And I'm going to put in half of a teaspoon of sugar as well, the sugar that we have for recipe. And then I'm just gonna give it a nice stir. And I'm gonna pull it off of the heated stove and we're gonna let that get frothy. So we're gonna let that go for about five minutes. You're gonna wanna see it bubbling on top and I'll show you what that's going to look like. So this is what yeast looks like when it's ready to go. You can see it's kind of frothed and bubbled up a little bit. So that means it has been activated and we are ready to use it. Okay, so our yeast is ready to go. So now on a low speed, we are going to add the remaining sugar, the two eggs, the butter, the vanilla, and then we've combined the nutmeg and the salt with the flour. We're just gonna use that first two cups, so half of the amount of flour, and we're gonna mix it just until it's combined, about one minute, and then we're going to add in the remaining two cups of flour. All right, so our dough has started to pull away from the sides of the bowl, that's how we know it's ready. Now we're just gonna put it out onto a floured surface and I'm gonna show you how to work with your dough. All right, so we have our bowl with the dough in it. I also have a second bowl. It's just lightly oiled with some vegetable oil. And the reason for that is we're actually gonna take it out of this bowl, knead it a little bit, work it into a nice ball and put it into this bowl so that it can proof. So whenever I'm dealing with dough, I like to try to get it 
as together as possible kind of in the bowl because dough is extremely sticky, which is why we have a floured surface. Um, it does help it from sticking to your countertops. All right. So the recipe is calling for just a little bit of work with the dough, just kind of kneading it. And as I said, it's super sticky. It really helps if you can flour up your hands a little bit too. And a little bit of stick is good to the counter because it will help when you're kneading the dough. So you're just gonna do this for a couple minutes, not too long. Just make sure it's all worked together. You're just gonna try to gather it together at this point and kind of form it into a bit of a ball. And there you go, you have a nice ball of dough. So I'm just gonna put it into my oiled um, bowl and I'm just gonna roll it around so that all sides of it get oiled. Cause this is actually going to rise pretty high. Um, it's gonna double in size. So now that this is greased on all four sides, I'm literally just gonna wrap it with some plastic wrap and I'm gonna throw mine in the oven um, to proof because I do have a proof setting. You don't have to. It is really warm this time of year in Ontario and if your house is really warm, it should double in size in about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, but if you find that it isn't, you can also pop it in the oven at a really low setting. I will put the temperature below this. I can't remember it offhand. Um, and that'll also help your dough rise a little bit as well. Sometimes even just putting it in the oven um, with the oven lights on will provide just a little bit, a um, little bit of warmth that'll help your dough rise as well. All right, so we are back. As you can tell, the dough has definitely at least doubled in size. So we are just gonna, on a well, and I highly stress well floured um, surface, and I always like to flour my hands a bit too because it will be a bit sticky. So when you're pulling the dough out, you're gonna wanna kind of deflate it. Just get some of the air out of it. Make sure it's nice and get some flour here on both sides. All right. Now we're just gonna roll it out. You wanna roll it so that it's about half an inch thick. Or as you can imagine, um, enough that you can get about 12 donuts out of it is what the recipe is saying. You're gonna to wanna to get this a little bit floured up. Cookie cutter, whether you're using two cookie cutters or a donut cutter. And I'm just gonna see how many I can. I just have a pan beside me here with some parchment on it. And I'm just gonna put the holes in the donuts, about six on each baking tray.
And like I said, I'm just gonna take this and I can re-roll it um, and get a few more donuts out of that. And then once we're done, we're literally just gonna let them sit for 20 minutes underneath the tea towel. All right, so now while that's rising, the dough is kind of rising again or just setting for about 20 minutes, we are going to take 240 grams of um, <laughs> confectioner's sugar. Then we're gonna put a third of a cup of heavy cream and half a teaspoon of vanilla. And all we're gonna do is literally just mix this together and we will have our glaze ready for when our donuts um, are done. So it is moment of truth time. We're gonna find out how we did. So we're gonna use vegetable oil. Um, it said to fill your pot to it's about a third full. Um, so that will vary depending on the size of your Dutch oven. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you have your thermometer put on the side because you're want to, going to want to get this up to 375 um, Fahrenheit, which is super hot. All right, so we are up to 375. I'm kind of scared to put it in, but I'm I'm so I'm a spaz. I'm worried that it's going to like spit at me. But anyways. Using a metal spatula, we're gonna put three, <laughs> it says we can cook three donuts at a time. And we're gonna cook them each for about one minute per side. So whenever I'm doing something like this, I like to just set a timer on my stove so that I can kind of see because it's rolling right like each donut's going to be a little bit different so I'm going to just keep an eye on here and just cook for a minute per side um I also have an oven mitt ready in case it starts spitting um out at me at all and the little um centers are only going to cook them for about 30 seconds a side so I'm pretty excited I also have turned down just a little bit. I want to keep it at this temperature, but I don't need it to get any hotter. So, and on the next batch, once I have this kind of down pat, I'll bring the camera over and I'll show you what I'm doing um, and what it looks like in the pan. And you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're using a metal spatula. Um, you don't want to, uh, <laughs> you don't want to, um, have anything melting in your oil. So these are frying up so nice. I'm so excited to try these. Um, from what I've heard, you kind of wanted to get that nice little ring around it. Now I might have overcooked that one slightly just because I was chatting away there, but it looks like it's going to be really, really good. And in case you can't tell as well, I have some racks set up. I have parchment in them, and then I have um, just a cooling rack there. So whenever I pull these out, I'm just gonna set them onto the cooling rack. So the recipe calls to do these while they're still hot. Feeling pretty warm, so I'm just gonna Dip them into the glaze. I think as they, the glaze starts to melt a little bit here, it'll get, ooh, even better. And I'm just gonna, once it gets a nice glazing on it, I'm just gonna put it back onto here so that it can, um, any of the extra is going to drip off onto there. We 
do want to be careful. These are a little bit on the hot side. But that's great because it's really making the glaze stick to the donut. It looks amazing. So there you have it, a glazed donut. Let me know if you give the recipe a try. Next week uh, or the week after we are going to be making cornbread on the Traeger, Micah's famous recipe. So that's how you make donuts. Um, it's hot out today. I might wait till a cooler day to make these. It's getting hot in here. But thank you for joining us on Barber and Haskell's Kitchen. If you have any questions about the recipe or ideas for upcoming shows, please leave them in the comments below.